Mother had become more political these days, often inserting herself into conversations of property and rights. I was elated at the idea of owning these pristine lands, but knew not the price on my life for doing so. Mother patted me on the shoulder and went to work preparing a fire for morning feast. I gazed up at the foreboding mountain pass and wondered what we might run into up there. Talk of lands might be for naught if we all met our deaths. Auden, called Blighter. Come and feast with us, brother. You will need your strength before we head for the pass. I stood quickly and walked to the village center where the men had gathered to dine. Tibor was up early this morning and had returned from a nearby freshwater stream where he captured a great number of perch with a net. The fish were cooked whole on top of wood planks and handed out to the men. I quickly ate my share, delighted to be eating something not drenched in sea salt. A fine meal, I bellowed. I think I will send Tibor to fetch my breakfast henceforth. I threw my fish bones at the boy who jumped out of the way as we laughed and smiled. Stop playing with your food, Kenna exclaimed. Why don't you make yourself useful, Auden? Take Jareth and go fetch some water from the stream. Mother handed several leather bladders to Jareth and I. I knelt down and bowed my head to Kenna in good fun. Of course, so great and powerful leader. Kenna picked up a spear and hit me in the arse as I walked away. Go on! Jareth and I quickly made our way to the stream that lay just outside the village, but before the tree line into the forest. Jareth kept his sword hand ready for trouble. Do you think they are out there, brother? Do you think they are watching us? I smirked and punched Jareth in the shoulder. If they are, I only need to run faster than you. Jareth smacked me upside the head and ran off towards the stream. Like children, we sprinted after one another until we reached the water's edge. Either you're getting slower, or I'm getting faster, said Jareth smugly. I pressed my hand on my lower back and arched my shoulders. The floor of the hall did not agree with me. I might need some mead to loosen things up a bit. We pulled the leather bladders off of our shoulders and knelt down to the water, filling one at a time. I waited patiently for the bladders to fill and looked up at the tall grass that stood motionless in the calm morning air. A noise from the water caught my attention, and I quickly jerked my head down to see what it was. Did you hear that? I asked Jareth. It's just a fish. Stop stalling and let's get this water back to the men. The leather bladder was full and I placed it down to fill another one. Then, the sound of splashing water once again caught my ear. I looked at the center of the stream, where the water began to jump and quickly rise. Jareth pulled out his sword, and I quickly dropped the water bladder, trading it for the axe resting in my belt. A face emerged from within the rushing water. What in the name of— I was quickly interrupted by the clear blue specter. Auden, Auden, is it you? The specter blinked its eyes wildly and spoke in a deep, manly voice. Who are you, monster? I asked cautiously. I am no monster. I am Iger, god of water. I was sent to you by Odin, our Allfather, to deliver a message unto you. Odin? Why did he not come himself? There are dark forces at work, young warrior. Even now in Odin's hall there are those who conspire and plot against him. His throne and the very existence of man are in terrible danger. He cannot yet leave his hall for fear of alerting the conspirators about his awareness of the plot. Iger was sincere and convincing. I lowered my axe, keeping it hanging from my side. What is the message? Iger formed an arm from the rushing water. Steinar is moving his forces to a camp away from his hall. He moves to attack Bjorgvin even during the winter months. You cannot linger here for long, but you cannot leave until you have dealt with the pestilence that infects Edney. Do you speak of the Ulfender? Arger shook his head slowly. Not even Odin can see what is hiding in the mountain. The curse is covering its tracks with a veil of darkness from which no light, no matter how bright, could penetrate. It is up to you, Odin, and your brave men, to find this darkness and stomp it out. But what of the Ulfender? They are but children of the greater evil that lies within the mountain. You must move quickly. Odin needs you back in Valhalla. Complete your quest with haste and return to your people. Is that all? Confront the girl about the darkness. She knows more than she lets on. Now, I must go. I have already lingered for far too long. Farewell, young warrior. The watery face of Iger quickly vanished back into the river, leaving Jareth and I in pure amazements. The gods come to our aid once more, brother, but it would seem that they need us now more than we need them. Jareth was right. Now more than ever, Odin needed our help.